All right, so welcome back. Uh, hopefully this is something along the lines of what you got. I know the graph is kind of difficult, especially unless you scaled the, the coordinates on the graph itself. But as long as you know that you've got a hyperbola there, I'm good with that. And you can graph it on any graphing software that you have, TI, Desmos, whatever's available to you. So now the way to classify conics using the discriminant. So we need to remember back to what the discriminant is, and that's this B minus 4AC part. Remember that was part of the quadratic formula, the part that's inside the parenthesis, or the radical for the quadratic formula. So you also need to know what A, B, and C are for conic sections specifically, and it doesn't talk about that here. So I'm gonna write out what exactly it's saying. So A is what goes in front of X squared, it's the coefficient for X squared. B is the coefficient in front of x times y. Those won't happen very often, but sometimes they do. c is what's in front of y squared, and technically there's also a d and f. Sorry, e. Forgot a letter. e and an f. And it has to be equal to zero. But these three are the main ones that you're looking for. You're going to use those with the discriminant to figure out what type of conic section we have. So when it's a circle, the discriminant is less than zero and B equals zero and A equals C. It has to be that way in order to be a circle. For it to be an ellipse, the discriminant is still less than zero, but either you can have both B equal to zero or B is not equal to zero or A C is not, or A is not equal to C, good Lord. Can't talk right now. <laughs> So uh, B not equal to zero, A not equal to C, those make it work for ellipses. You can have both, that's fine. But as long as one of those is not true, then it's an ellipse. Um, and then a parabola is whenever the discriminant's equal to zero. A hyperbola occurs whenever it's greater than zero. So less than zero, you have to figure out from there whether it's a circle or ellipse. If it's equal to zero, it's a parabola. Greater than zero, hyperbola. So this example, we got three different ones to look at, but we're going to just do the discriminant for all three instead of having to write them in a standard form or anything like that. So it even says, without turning it into a standard form, state whether, what it is, and don't graph it either, right? So looking at A here, we have our A value. Remember, that's in front of X squared, so it's negative 1. B is sort of in front of X, Y. We don't have an X, Y here, so it's 0. That's because it, the zero eliminated x, y, right? And then our c value is in front of y squared, so that's 3. So now our discriminant. Remember, that's b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to be 0 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 3. Well, 0 squared is 0. Negative 4 times a negative 1 is positive 4. Positive 4 times 3 is positive 12. 0 plus 12 is 12. That is greater than 0, which means we have a hyperbola. Pretty straightforward on that one. The next one, our a value in front of x squared is 2. Our b value, there is no xy, so it's 0. And our c value in front of y squared is also 2. So, our discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. B squared is 0 squared. Minus 4 times A is 2 times C is 2. Negative 4 times positive 2. So, sorry, 0 squared is 0 still. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. 0 minus 16 is negative 16. That is less than 0, which means we now need to check two things. Is B equal to 0? Yes. Is A equal to C? They're both 2. So yes, these two lead us to it being our circle. And then our last one. There's nothing x squared, so A is 0. There's no A, x, y, so B is 0. And there's a 1 in front of y squared. So here, B squared minus 4AC. So 0 squared minus 4 times 0 times 1. Well, anything times 0 is 0, so 0 squared is 0. 
Negative four times zero is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. That's equal to zero, which means we have a parabola. Now, parabolas are probably the easiest one to decipher, even without doing all this. Because if I look at what I have here, uh, we only have one thing being squared. That's uh, Unless there was an x, y, and we had a b that was there, um, something weird might happen there. But uh, regardless, um, if you only have one thing being squared, it's going to be a parabola. Which way it's opening, that's depending on what's being squared. But in this case, y is being squared, so that's going to be a horizontal parabola opening direction that I can't tell without doing work to it. But. So now you have one more for you guys to do. And three, actually. But same process, though, for all three of these.